Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You remember Sons of Consolation? This was one of them. One of the Sons of Consolation. When everybody was bitter about Jesus and the whole land was filled with bitterness, hatred, unbelief, fear was in the air. It was an hour you didn't know who to trust. Even Judas Iscariot was negotiating the master at a price. Jesus had this disciple he could trust. And he knew this man would not betray him or let anybody know where he was. And he talked with him and prepared. And then the man said, let the master know everything is all right. And Jesus came there secretly with his disciples. That night, tell somebody, say, I'll never forget it. Never forget it, brothers and sisters. That night, he sat with the twelve and had dinner. When he was through with the dinner, he took bread and broke it and gave to them. He said, this is my body. And they were looking at him. What was he saying? Peter, his body? Yes. He said, this is my body. He broke it and said, eat it. At that moment, they realized this was not just an addendum to the meal. They didn't understand what was going on yet. What was he saying? Then, it began to dawn on them when he took the cup. He drank of it. He said, now, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for many for the expiation, the purification of sin. He said, do this in remembrance of me. What is the master saying? Paul was not there. These guys didn't understand what Jesus did. And after the ascension of Jesus, they were breaking bread from house to house without understanding what was going on. They just did it because Jesus said, do it in remembrance of me. So every day they did it without understanding what it meant. But Paul declares, he says, I have received of the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. That revelation... He said the same night in which he was betrayed, he was not there. He got it in a revelation. He saw it in the visions of God. And God showed it to him and let him know the meaning of it. He said the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, eat it. In the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped and gave it to them and said, drink. And do it in remembrance of me. Then he made a very powerful statement. He said, as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you show, that means declare the Lord's death till he comes again. He said, anybody who eats of this bread or drinks of this cup in an unworthy manner shall be guilty of the, the body and the blood of the Lord. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many die because they do not discern the Lord's body. He is telling us there is a revelation in this thing. 
He says, as often as you do it, you are declaring the Lord's death. What does it mean to declare the Lord's death? When you take the communion, what does it mean, brother? Here you are, you've been suffering. Something's been going wrong in your life. Maybe family members have been dying. You come to the point in your life, you say, I've had it. It's enough. I've had it. You know what? It's time to break prayer. The things that don't seem to be working in your life. You say, what is all this? It's time to break bread. Why do you break bread? He says, as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you show. The Greek word means to declare, to reaffirm the Lord's death. You are actually saying, that man died in my place. I have no business being sick or being afflicted or being defeated. I refuse to be poor in the name of Jesus. And you know what? When you take that cup, you are saying, his blood washed me as white as snow. You are remembering the cry in Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18, though your sins be as skeletons, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Maybe you feel condemned in your life. Maybe there's something you've done that just wouldn't go away. You find yourself praying and praying and praying, it just wouldn't go away. It's time to break bread. Please turn this tape over for the continuation of this message. The time you've got to have that bread and have that cup. His body was broken for me. And you go. His blood was shed for me. For the remission, the removal. You know the meaning of remission? It means to take away, to blot out, to remove, completely wipe away. One of the problems a lot of people have today is sin consciousness. The consciousness of sin. That's what the devil uses against a lot of people. I said he doesn't care whether you sin or you don't sin. All he wants is to give you sin consciousness. Sin consciousness is more dangerous than sin. When you believe you are just not good enough for God, when you believe there's something more you need to do, you're in trouble. Brothers and sisters, there is nothing more you need to do. You cannot make God love you more. How can I make it strong enough for you? He cannot love you any more than he did when Jesus died for you. He can't love you more. You can't get him to love you more. He said, greater love hath no man than this. That a man should lay down his life for his friends and he has done it. What should you do now? Act on his love. Act on his love. Take advantage of his love. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. 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 With that understanding, you just walk out of bondage. You just walk out of fear. You just walk out of pain. You just walk out of poverty. You just walk out of it. You just walk out of it. You just walk out of it. You walk out of condemnation. 
It requires no extra prayer and fasting. You just walk out of it. You just declare who you are in Christ. Somebody says, is that all? <laughs> then what did it mean when he said, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness? All you had to do was look. Hey, let's look at the woman in the Bible. Jesus is somewhere sitting. There's a crowd running. Ah, the master raises his head. The hundreds of people after one woman. They are running after the woman. And she's running, running, running. Finally, she gets to where Jesus is. And she's panting. And the rest of them come. They find Jesus. And they feel like, yeah, we've gotten him. So they surround him. And they say, all right, Rabbi, we caught this woman in the very act of adultery. The law of Moses says to stone her to death. What do you say? You know what? They have their stones. Read the Bible. They were holding their stones. They were ready to fix him. And the woman too. So they said, the law of Moses says to stone her to death. What do you say? <laughs> Jesus was writing on the ground. I love Jesus. He was just... They said, Master, waiting. He said, anybody among you that has not sinned should cast the first stone. And then he just went on right. And you know what? They were... One by one. They all left. Jesus was still riding. The woman was waiting. She said, <laughs> and Jesus raised his head. He said, where are your accusers? She said, they are gone. Jesus said, nobody has condemned you. She said, no, Lord, I love what Jesus did. Now, don't you think this was the right moment for Jesus to say, yeah. <laughs> I want you to know I'm the only one who can condemn you. As the son of God, I want you to know you have sinned and your sin shall find you out. Wasn't that the right time for Jesus to prove himself? That he was more righteous than everybody? You know what Jesus did? He looked at this dear woman. He said, woman, neither do I condemn you. Hey, don't you get me wrong now. Some people say, even Jesus was not sure of himself. He couldn't cast the stone. That's not why. Jesus loved her and said, woman, I do not condemn you. Go and sin no more. Let that woman go. Who? What about the law of Moses? Didn't he say stone out of death? How could you let her go? Jesus, you're messing up the law of Moses. Let her go. Jesus said, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Hey, what is he telling you? Can I tell you? Jesus is letting us know there is no sin that God cannot forgive. If Jesus does not condemn you, you are free. The Bible says, whosoever the Son of Man sets free. 
is free indeed. He said, go and sin no more. Don't go back to sin. He says, I set you free. Don't return to sin, but stand up tall. There's life in you. The nature of God above sin. The nature of righteousness that makes you white, as pure as God. Hallelujah. Because you have his purity. You have his righteousness. You have his nature. His blood has purged you. Tonight, as we take the communion, when it's time to take that cup, I want you to remember every uncleanness in your life is taken away. Every uncleanness. I tell you, there's power, there's power. There's an anointing. In the Old Testament, he said, you shall put the blood on the doorposts and the lintels of your house so that when the death angel comes to town, when he sees the blood, he will pass over you. Hallelujah. When you understand the blood that was shed for us, the darkness cannot stay in your house. Are you hearing me? The darkness cannot remain in your life. It cannot remain in your home. Tonight you're breaking bread and you're taking charge of your whole family. Because of that covenant. Hallelujah. Everything that is not of God in your life, today you will cancel it by yourself. You see, that blood speaks of oneness. I told you, don't wait for God to fulfill his word in your life. You are the one to fulfill the word in your life. You are the one to bring it to pass. Why? Because you remember God saying to Moses, he said, Moses, stretch your hand over the sea and divide it. He didn't say stretch your hand over the sea and I will divide it. He gave Moses the credit. What is God saying? He's saying to you, whatever change you want to effect in your life, in your family, in your home, in your job, in your finances, whatever change you want to effect, go ahead and do it. Remember, the blood makes us one with Jesus. The Bible says, he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. So we are one spirit. So the Bible says, we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. One together with him. The Bible says, don't you know that your members, oh boy, this is one of those revelations of God's word that a lot of God's children have never understood. He says, the members of your body are the members of Christ. Let me explain that to you. He is telling you in that scripture that your hand, this hand, belongs to Christ and is a member of Christ. This one is a member of Christ. Do you understand? He says, how can you give the body of Christ? He's talking about your physical body. He says, how can you give the body of Christ to become a member of a harlot? In the same way, if you will not accept to give your body to a harlot to become one with a harlot, do not give it to cancer. Do not give it to disease. Do not give it to sickness. Do not give it to HIV. Don't give it to any kind of pain. Why? Because it is the Lord's body. Your body has become the Lord's body. Hallelujah. You know, as we're sharing now, there is an anointing. There is an anointing. There is an anointing. Glory to God. There is an anointing, an anointing of the Holy Ghost that's working right now. Hallelujah. I said the anointing of the Holy Ghost is working right now. Thank you, Lord Jesus.